to embrace the Netscale solution. It's pretty incredible, actually. I mean, we were at one stage a company that was just going to shut down because we were not getting traction, and even if we were getting traction, you know, it was not big, and, and more so, we were not getting traction with the VCs. Right? This is despite the fact that we had we had returned so much money for the investors in my previous company, right? I mean, there was this investor in Chicago. I was literally begging this guy. I mean, he made on his uh, $750,000 investment that he made at Exodus, he made close to $800 million. $800 million, okay? I mean, with, with whom else I have the liberty to ask, right? I'm begging this guy, I'm telling him, there is something in this company, otherwise I won't be spending my time, right? Just give me $5 million, that's all I need. If you give me $5 million, I can raise the rest of the money. He said no, because his theory was infrastructure, because this was an infrastructure product. He said uh, the, infrastructure, the technology that you have will eventually go into an ASIC, and market is down right now, right? And by the time the market comes back up, this technology will go into an ASIC, which will commoditize the advantage that you have. I said no. In fact, Sequoia spent almost a month and a half doing the due diligence just to understand that an ASIC cannot replace our technology. That's why I give it to Sequoia for their smartness, their ability to look behind and understand, because many of them are product managers, yes? So Resonate uh, was in the software load balancing, Correct. the way NetScale is. Correct. And like what, uh, what was the thinking process for you to get into NetScale, which was also so software load balancer uh, technology, and Resonate uh, was not doing well uh, by that time. Nobody had this technology that we had. Oh, okay. So the genesis of uh, NetScaler is actually very interesting. When I was um, when I was at Exodus, right? I was uh, VP Engineering. VP, uh, I was not VP Operations. I had given up the VP Operations role, uh, and then I was the CTO. So when we were going through this hyper growth, we could not have sustained like the way how we were running our business if we didn't have technologies like this, because massive amount of servers you had to deploy. So when uh, the founder of Netscaler, who used to work at Sun Microsystems, Sun actually had kicked off this project. It was called the Kepler Project. I don't know how many of you are from Sun here. So Sun had this project called the Kepler Project, which had similar concepts. So the founder came and pitched this uh, idea, which is what resulted. I was, I was the early investor in this company. And then middle of 2000, uh, you know, when I left Exodus, I became the CEO of this company. So I believed in it. I believe that this technology could be significantly valuable in data centers, right? And, uh, I, and the thing is, I understood the problem. I also understood the solution, right? I, I mean, of course, I didn't know how to build this, this one. But we had great engineers who built the solution. Uh, but the need was there, and it was very clear. So then, you know, it's, it's a matter of execution, right? If you go back and look at the first slide that I talked about, point number two, right, is about execution, building the product and bringing it to the market, right? That's where 70 to 80% of the company's success or failure is based on the execution, how well you can execute. So most people fail because they cannot execute properly. Uh, yes, Anshit. While Netscaler was on the up ramp, there was another competitor that was up and rising, which is F5. Can you touch on how Paranoid you were about competition and how the industry was involved in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good question, very good question. So the question is, uh, there was another competitor at that time, which is F5. So how paranoid you were? Of course we were very paranoid. But what gave us the advantage is that two year of technological difference. And no one had integrated this TCP multiplexing technology and the, the operating system that we had, right, all in a software bundle. If you look at Netscaler, even today, there is no ASIC inside the product. 
everything is a piece of software that runs on a commodity hardware and that gives an, an incredible performance advantage over anyone else, right? Plus on top of it, this whole TCP multiplexing. And that gave us about two to two and a half years. So at the time, by the way, uh, just as an FYI, I mean, I can talk about it today. Uh, in a two, in uh, 2002, when we were running out of money, I mean, at the time when I was desperately looking for funding, right, I was looking for multiple options, right? Uh, one is to raise money through the VCs. The other one is to find companies that were funded. In fact, there were many telecom-centric companies that were funded, lots of money. And tel the whole telecom industry went under, right? So there are a lot of these companies which had cash in the bank, but they had no product. So I was looking for companies that could basically merge with us or acquire us, bring their cash, and then uh, our, we bring our product and our technology. And the third is to find a buyer. So I called up FI. And interestingly, FI, I, I was the reference for FI when I was at Exodus, because we used FI everywhere. And I was the VC reference, and I was the customer reference. So I knew everyone at uh, FI. So I called up this guy, um, uh, VP of Business Development, and you know, I tried to explain. I said, look, we are, we are available if you guys want to pick us up. And by the way, we have won these customers, especially against you. Right? Against F5, we had won several of the customers. And his reaction was, oh, you know, those are trivial customers, and we really don't care losing those customers to you. And they have bought you because, you know, you offer it. Because, oh, his, his whole analysis was, you guys gave, like, 75% discount. That's how typically they talk about, right? So you guys have given like 75% discount. Literally, you know, you, you've sold the product at no cost. And that's why these guys have bought, the, bought your product. That was his uh, analysis. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, he could have picked NetScaler for $25 million at that time. If he had offered $25 million, our board would probably would have sold it. So I'm glad it didn't happen. And, uh, you know, I mean, we had, we had similar incidents even at uh, Exodus as well. So at Exodus, uh, uh, there is this company called Digex. Digex, which was, uh, which was a nationwide internet services company, they approached us, and uh, it was a Saturday. You know, they flew in from Virginia, and uh, we spent Chandra, myself, and my CFO, and then from their side, the CEO and the CFO, we spent like five hours or six hours. And we would have sold it at that time for about $25 million, $25, $27 million. And he wanted to buy it at $10 million. <laughs> so we said, thank you very much. And we went on to build the company. So I'm glad we didn't sell in either case. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you know, uh, the, the key message here right, is you go through these ups and downs. And when you're going through, Today it's easy for me to stand up here and then tell this as a story. Okay, when I when you're going through, even I don't know whether this is going to be successful or not. I have no idea. Okay, but you give everything that you have to build this into a success, and at the end, let the market decide and let uh, uh, you know the financial success essentially decide. But in both the cases, it turned out to be a good thing for us to actually go off and build the company. So I know I, I think I have another five, ten minutes time. So let me quickly take you through some of these things. Um, I picked this quote from uh, Sequoia Capital. I think it's absolutely fantastic. If you have not seen it, uh, let me read this for you once again. We cater to the founders and management who have selected us as their business partners. We have learned that the only way to help develop a fabulous company is one step at a time. This only happens if the company makes wonderful products or delivers a service that thrills large numbers of customers. If that occurs, then founders, management, and employees of these companies prosper. Okay? It's only then that the investor deserves to be rewarded. It has to happen in that order, and there are no shortcuts. 
I think it's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So whether you, you know, you're an investor or whatever, right? I mean, philosophy like this. Because you're building a company because you're addressing the needs of a customer. And when that happens, success is imminent. Everybody will prosper. Right? So, and that's what, I mean, honestly, I, that's what I believe in. Any place I go, right, my whole theory is customer acquisition and customer retention. Follow that path, you will succeed. Acquire customers and retain customers. That means you have customers who are willing to pay you for the product they're going to use. And there are customers who continue to buy from you. That just reflects the fact that you've taken care of the customer. It's not just customer support, by the way. When I talk about customer retention, it's not just customer support. It is product management. It is uh, pricing, right? It is marketing, everything. You have to take care of the customer. Anyway, so let's quickly go through some of the funding scenarios here. Um, I just put this slide. I don't know if you can see it. Need cash for alcohol research. No, I need some VC funding. I, I put this because uh, a lot of us think that anything we do, you know, VCs must fund because <laughs> these VCs have $500 million uh, and, you know, they should fund us. I, in fact, I, you know, I'm dealing with a couple of these uh, entrepreneurs right now and they always complain, why don't these VCs fund? <laughs> so they have their own rules, their own uh, uh, challenges to fund. And in the meantime, the whole VC industry went through a major, major shakeup. Yeah, this is a Harvard Business Review article that just came a month or two months ago. I mean, you can actually see you know, where it was in terms of uh, number of deals and returns and all that stuff and how it has come down. So if you look at this slide, the number of deals right, that the VCs were doing was about 8,000 deals. So it has dropped to about 2,800 in 2009 with only about $17 billion and no exits. I mean, the worst part for the VCs is there will be no exits, right? All tiny exits. And a lot of these guys fo got formed during the 2000 era where the IPOs, if you look at, right, 17 IPOs.